We all have those days when life seems to be against us. Everything that could be wrong is going wrong. Whatever it is that seems to be attacking your life, it seems that your life is crashing around you and you are overwhelmed, distressed, and distraught. One day, the Lord spoke to me of how David, when faced with devastating circumstances, encouraged himself in the Lord. And the Lord told me, we should do the same. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord. If you don't know this story, it's the story of when David and his men returned after trying to join the Philistine army. And while away, the Amalekites overran David's small community and took all their wives, children, and possessions and set their community on fire. David's loyal followers, including his mighty men, were all distressed, distraught, angry, and wanted to kill David. David was not only distressed because his own wife and children were taken, but his friends, those who were loyal to him, were deeply grieved and had turned against him. So to simply say David was distressed doesn't even really speak to David's state of mind or feelings at the time. The word translated distress is the Hebrew word yatseir, which means to squeeze or bind. Have you ever been in a stressful situation and it feels like you are caught in a vice grip? You feel such a sense of pressure that you cannot think or concentrate on anything else but the problems. Well, that's what David was feeling, magnified by Tia. As David sat there among the ruins of his home and looked around, he saw nothing but discouraged and down cast men, thinking of stoning him, as well as he was also grieving over his own wife and children having been taken. David could have easily allowed grief, sorrow, sadness, and bitterness to overcome him, sinking to a black hole of depression. Not many of us have experienced as bad a day as David did when he returned to his home and discovered that his enemies had destroyed or stolen everything that was important to him, and his own men turned against him. However, it is David's response to his despair, distress, grief, sorrow, anguish, and sadness that we need to take note of when we do face our own difficulties. Scripture tells us even in the midst of his great distress, David encouraged himself in the Lord. The Hebrew word encourage is hasak, which translates bind on or about, gird on, to be or grow firm or strong. In a sense, what David did was join himself with the Lord and treated the Lord and invited him into his circumstances. David knew the more he thought on the tragedy, the more he would bind himself to the fears, anxiety, worries, discouragement, sorrow, and sadness of the circumstances, and it would overwhelm him. So David took hold of his imagination, anxieties, stress, fears, and worries, and directed them to the Lord. He cast his cares upon the Lord. And once David sought the Lord's counsel, wisdom, help, and encouragement, there was an immediate radical change in David's men. Instead of wanting to stone him, they decided to follow him to overtake their enemies and rescue their families. How could these men, who were extremely greed, distraught, blaming David for the loss of their wives and kids, wanting to stone him to death, turn around and be inspired to follow him. The Lord had turned their hearts to have faith in God's deliverance. It is in times of uncertainty, troubles, and distress the Lord was David's constant because he knew no matter what the circumstances, the Lord is above it, seated upon the throne of sovereignty. Through praise and worship, David changed his focus through the eye of faith and he beheld El Shaddai, his rock, his fortress, and his deliverance. Be blessed, my friends, in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.